Welcome back to our channel. I'm Kristen and I'm here with my business partner, Hannah, to dive into the pros and cons of living in Jefferson County, West Virginia. Every week we dive into different West Virginia locales and this week we're focused on the easternmost corner of the state. The price tags on the homes in Jefferson County and many new construction options have brought many people out lately. We're big fans of well-researched home searches. So we're here to try to talk you out of Jefferson County. <laughs> Kristen is kind of the authority on this one because she considered moving here and ended up not taking the leap, but not for any of the reasons we're talking about today, right? Nope. If the kindergarten cutoff had been a month later, I'd be a Jefferson County resident and not just the unofficial resident I consider myself based on how much time I spend there. <laughs> Let's make sure this is a good fit before you start putting mileage on your car or going down a YouTube rabbit hole. Jefferson County is certainly charming, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. We've got four major reasons why this may not be where you wanna find your next home. Plus, we have a bonus tip at the end that would truly make or break your home search, so be sure to watch out for that. All right, here's the biggest one for most people. This had to be number one. If you're looking at job options and are close to DC, most of Jefferson County is gonna be a very long commute for you. Don't get us wrong, there are certainly people who make this drive or take the train every day, but we wanted to make sure that you understood that this is a long commute. We have viewers reach out to us with cities already picked out who want 45 minute commutes, and this is pretty hard to achieve if you're going anywhere near DC. You're most likely gonna be traveling on Route 9 to get to Virginia, and the problem comes when you cross the bridge and it turns from a four lane road into a windy two lane road going over the mountain. This is one of the most congested roads during rush hour and home values along Route 9 are impacted by this fact in Virginia. When estimating your commute, be sure to use Waze and enter in your departure times for a more realistic assessment. Consider alternate routes as well, like along Route 7 or some back routes off of Route 9, knowing that a few times a year you might be forced to drive this way when there are major accidents. Or if you're still intent on Jefferson County, stick to the locations closest to your routes, like Shenandoah, Charlestown, or Summit Point, to name a few. Bonus tip for commuters, keep in mind that if your commute involves 267, you're paying some pretty high tolls. This seems to go up every year, although local politicians are trying to prevent this. This next reason isn't gonna be obvious to you until you're driving around Jefferson County and exploring. Let's turn now towards the elephant in the room, new construction. Mm, you mean the big piles of dirt that keep popping up everywhere? Precisely, we've seen a lot of rapid growth out here. So if you're opposed to driving past housing developments on a regular basis, this would not be a pleasant place to live. Certain areas are less affected, and I have noticed these developments tend to be close to major roadways or town centers, so there are still many pockets of serene open fields and private spaces. So if you're all about solitude and seclusion in your next home, it's certainly possible to find that here with the right amount of acreage, but you may start seeing new developments along your commute as the area continues to grow. If you'd like to be a little more off the beaten path, you can check out certain parts of Berkeley County, Clark County, or Frederick County. And the silver lining of all this new development is that more businesses are able to thrive and come to the area. We just saw a poke restaurant that was coming soon in Charlestown last week. Mm, can't wait. <laughs> the new homes aren't as hard of a pill to swallow if we get some more dining options in my book. And that's coming from someone who currently lives right next door to an active construction zone. But I also knew that it was in the future plans when I bought this place. It's always smart to research your zoning before you make the commitment to move somewhere, but also understand that zoning can change at any time. It's out of your control. What's one thing that everyone likes to complain about? Taxes? Well, yes. But here I'm talking about weather. Jefferson County certainly has its fair share of seasons with a nice hot summer to a pretty cold winter. We experience it all here. If you don't want to experience all the seasons in their glory, you may not be happy here. I know my husband would prefer to never see snow again at the earliest possible time. If you're like him, you'll either want to look elsewhere or be prepared to invest in a beach condo so you can escape for the winter months. The dream would be to have a short-term rental by the beach that could pay it for itself or help fund your retirement so you weren't paying two mortgages. True, and we know some great realtors all over the southern beach towns, so reach out if you want to explore that option. Yeah. Back to weather, though. <laughs> According to past climate data, there are four comfortable months with temperatures ranging from 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit here. But there are also those toasty days with temperatures soaring over 90 degrees Fahrenheit and the occasional chilly one where the, it dips below freezing. And don't forget the snow. <laughs> we got around 20 inches annually, with January being the snowiest month 
that was definitely true this year so far. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to escape the occasional snow, this would not be the best place for you. Our last major reason to reconsider Jefferson County as your next home is school choice. Jefferson County has a fair share of schools, but not as many options overall for private schools, especially private schooling past elementary school. We've got 18 public schools and six private schools in the county, also four private schools nearby Berkeley County, but here's the catch. Only two of the Jefferson County private schools go up to eighth grade and only one go up to ninth grade. And if you're looking for secular options in private schools, 67% of those private schools are religiously affiliated. If you prefer non-secular education, you're in luck here. Some families on the southern parts of Jefferson County do cross into Clark County or Western Loudoun County for a handful of other schools. Looking at the public schools, students in elementary can benefit from smaller class sizes here with student-teacher ratios ranging historically from 12 to one to 17 to one. It's all about what suits your child's needs and some children really thrive in these small environments. And let's not forget Eastern Panhandle Preparatory Academy a new public charter school with over 100 acres of space. This school has only been open a few years at the time of filming, but we're excited to see it grow. Our hands are tied from recommending schools for both ethical and logistical reasons, but we can provide you with valuable data to help you make an informed decision. And don't forget to research the HOPE Scholarship if you're debating between public and private school options. This is a popular resource for Jefferson County families. Now onto your bonus tip internet options can be limited depending on how close you are to town or major subdivisions. This is changing a little with expanded satellite internet, but needs to be researched because it is so pivotal to many home buyers these days, especially those who can work remotely. The last thing we want is for you to unpack your boxes only to find that you can't stream Netflix. So be sure to reach out for our internet provider research list in case you need help with this. Jefferson County has many charms, but it's not for everyone. Whether your search hinges on a commute to DC or certain school options, be sure to do your research and see if any of these factors are a deal breaker for you. If we haven't talked to you out of Jefferson County yet, be sure to watch our Jefferson County versus Clark County to compare this location to its Virginia neighbor. We're here to help you weigh the pros and cons and possibly consider some locations in West Virginia or Northern Virginia that weren't even on your radar yet. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring your options.